Hey everyone, I am TRX and today the time has come. I will be reviewing and ranking all of Daniel Craig's James Bond movies. Now I know I'd say I'd do this video after my No Time to Die review, which I know was a pretty freaking long time ago. No, no, alright. I know that sounds bad. Listen, I know that my upload schedule has the same consistency of a dying person heartbeat, but listen, my schedule changes like the tide, but the video is here nonetheless. This channel has a reputation that I intend to keep, so with this video, we're going to review each Daniel Craig James Bond movie with spoilers, and we're going to rank them at the end, so let's get started with... Jason Bourne. So, Casino Royale is the first movie in this reboot... Re uh, refresh? Is it a reef? Donald! Is it a reef brush? I don't know. I'm, I don't care to look it up. This is the first movie in the series and people will tell you it's the best and amazing, but what do I think? Since I got here and I want to yell my opinions too. Well, to be honest, it's really, really good. But it's not perfect. I think what sets this apart right off the bat is the ferocity this movie has. This version of James isn't very suave. Instead, he's just a real brute, like he's a barbarian. In the first scene in the bathroom, there is no karate. It's just more of him being like, yeah, I'm built, I'm more muscular than you. So I'm going to beat the crap out of you and shoot you in the head with my gun. James is just an absolute barbarian in this movie, and I love it. I mean, you know, this movie may seem darker than other James Bond movies from the first scene and the following chase scene, but I don't think it's overly darker. I just think it's more human. It treats him like an actual person. Like, how would a person react to getting their first kill? How would a killer react to having a console a witness? This movie just takes its material more seriously. Instead of after getting attacked by a sword, James is mad and kind of frantic. Instead of yelling it like he would have in an older Bond movie, that almost cost me an arm and a leg. Are you kidding me? Like, he doesn't do that here, and it works better, and then everyone acts like, oh my gosh, it's so dark because he's not acting like a freaking clown the entire movie. The action, I think, here really works so well because in most of these scenes, you just get to see how James would act. So while we have this great action, you also get a look into the character. My favorite is this opening chase scene where it seems he's just making stuff up as he goes along. Like, okay, I'm gonna chase him. Uh, I'm gonna get in this bulldozer now and try to run him over. Yeah, oh, okay, let's uh, go to the top of this crane. I, how do I get that down? I guess I'm gonna have to jump, and I just love that. And I think the best thing is this brash way he acts that doesn't go away throughout this entire movie. It really makes sure that his character stays consistent throughout the entire movie, but he does end up having to pay for that consequence of being so arrogant. His arrogant mistakes help him learn, and it carries out the entire movie so he never feels inconsistent. He's young and dumb, and I love how he gets like his Aston Martin from a guy in a poker match, and his next thought is, okay, like I haven't done enough crazy stuff today. Yeah, uh, I took your car, but now I'm gonna take your wife. Jeez, James, this man's got a family. Weirdly enough, this gives the movie tension as it escalates. We see how James got out of previous scenarios before, doesn't work now, and that his former tactics don't work because the villains in the movie have adapted as well. The farther the movie goes along, the more we see how far in over his head he is and how his cocky demeanor is risking everything around him, and that fatal mistake of letting his guard down really makes him pay in the end. The movie has excellent pacing with him starting out as a field agent being cocky and risky, then moving in a tracking down the sheaf, actually finding what his plan is, then he goes in to take down the sheaf, meeting him in a face-to-face -face poker match in the Casino Royale, and then that ends up opening up more about the agency overall that are all in this one poker game trying to get Le Chief's money, and the, all of a sudden, more opening up about everything else, and just like James, we are thrown into this world bigger than we originally managed just thinking it was a normal poker game, as everything collides on this one table. This world is so great and unique, and everything in the casino is actually near perfect from a storytelling and character perspective. It's good, and a little too good. The last third after the death of Le Chief, though, is really just a weaker film. The relationship between Vesper and Bond, Vesper, by the way, if I hadn't mentioned yet, is the Bond girl, has already been set up, but this just takes it straight to the forefront instead of it being on the back burner with them retiring. And this is just not as compelling as a story. The story of who Vesper really is isn't bad, but it just feels weaker, and leaving with an ending we're all good, doesn't always feel as satisfying due to the near perfection of the second act. Just because it does feel like the narrative wraps up really nicely in the second act, it really leads to a less interesting final third act and final shootout. That said, it doesn't detract too much, but it does hold the movie back. This movie, though, is great. I think Casino Royale was great. I give it an 8 out of 10. Let's move on to the sequel. I hope this one's good. Quantum of Solace. 
And just like the Bond song for this movie by Jack White and Alicia Keys, Quantum of Solace is a decent setup, but absolutely blown when it comes to execution. The first thing you notice in this movie is that the action is now awful. Apparently they decided to have an Adderall addict become the editor, only to be complimented by a cinematographer who apparently has an acidic reflex to whenever there's an action scene. Those clean fights in Casino Royale are absolutely gone, instead being substituted with an absolute nightmare of the cameraman scene whenever there's action trying to shake his arm as vibrantly as possible to make sure that everyone in the audience will try to puke when they watch this movie. And I wish this was the only downgrade that we got in this movie, but oh no no no, there is so much more. The story is completely nosedive and now there isn't a compelling story at all. This movie feels like a total letdown compared to the first one. If there was anything that I could compare Quantum of Solace to, it's bad DLC to a fantastic video game. The sad thing is, this movie completely poops on the legacy of Casino Royale by being nearly a direct sequel to Casino Royale. This movie is about James tracking down Quantum because that is what Vesper was attached to and you know what, I gotta give props to Quantum of Souls making a very brave and bold decision as it took probably the weakest part of Casino Royale and said, yeah. That's what this whole movie is going to be based around. Quantum works best in Casino Royale as a presence to make Le Chief more interesting. No one ever cared about the actual organization or what they were actually trying to do, and it's not even interesting. They're trying to bankrupt the country through an oil mogul. Oh wow, maybe there was a reason that wasn't in the first one. The narrative here is boring and forgettable. The characters all step down. James Bond has become just a husk of himself, the new Bond girls are lame and uninteresting, the villain is painfully forgettable just being this oil businessman, the action ugh, makes me want to throw up, and it shouldn't be so bad because this movie is so short, it's almost an hour and like a half, it's like an hour and 40 minutes, it's so short, and yet it manages to make so many uninteresting things get packed into this movie with the amount of time it had. They don't drag out these concepts, yet they're still so boring. Quantum Solace is the definition of a disappointing sequel as it fills it nearly everything in the short runtime that it has. If this movie was any longer than two hours, it might enter into the range of being lethally boring, making sure you had a paramedic on all times if you ever try to watch this movie. Quantum is bad. It gets a 2 out of 10. The next one better be good. You know, guys, I'm just not very excited anymore, Bond. Like, how good would the third one be? I mean, the last one was so... Oh! Wait, he's on a motorcycle? Wait, James, what are you doing? Oh my gosh! He's on a train now! What the heck? Oh my gosh, he's on a crane. This is amazing. Wait, oh, oh, oh yeah, Bond! Shake and not stir tickets, please! This is the greatest movie of all time! No, oh my gosh, take the shot, take the shot, and no, James! This movie's amazing. After the dumpster fire that was Quantum of Solace, the 007 franchise brought in the man, Sam Mendes, who I think single-handedly saved this version of Bond. Casino Royale set up the character of Bond very well, but the story overall isn't the biggest factor. Quantum of Solace did nothing close to expand upon anything, it just took a big dump on the legacy of Casino Royale. So Sam Mendes comes in and looks and he's like, alright, how about a bigger scale, and let's bring over the best characters James and M from Casino Royale and put them on the forefront of the story. He makes the world bigger, but also makes the movie very personal by instantly making him underdog by making him get shot. Kind of like in Casino Royale by him being an underdog by just not knowing the system. He is now the same person that he was from Casino Royale, and that human side of him and chance of death is reminded to us and shown that it's not a possibility, but a high chance that he could die on the field. The pacing here is incredible, as he goes from coming back from death to then being put on a mission, and then you can see how he's not prepared for leading to the real that MI6 know that he probably wouldn't make it, told him by the villain Silva, who's the other side of the coin that Bond is on. Silva, by the way, the villain in the story, is incredible, and he is another agent, just like Bond, who got betrayed by MI6, but also has that motherly connection to M that Bond has. It really gives him an interesting perspective as Bond sees someone who is truly like him. He's not going up against an evil oil mogul. He's going to go up against someone that seems very similar to him. Silva to me is a really interesting Bond villain. He's not too over the top and seems pretty grounded even though he does have his wacky moments like the teeth scene. And I think he's a really great villain for Bond to go up against. Now, people are probably going to say to me, but T-Rex, you're forgetting the part after when he got captured when the movie just straight up rips off the Dark Knight. What about that? This movie's not that good because it just stole the Dark Knight. Now, 
I think you guys know by now how much I love The Dark Knight. Another reason why it is one of my favorite movies. This movie I personally love. It is easily in my top 5 favorite movies of all time, period. It is my favorite DC film. It is one of my favorite films in general. I adore this film. Do I have criticism? Well, yeah, it ends eventually. That said, I don't think this criticism is that fair. While you can see the inspiration and the writers said that, I think that Skyfall truly is different. The Dark Knight is the story of Joker trying to bring down society while trying to personally break Batman to show that the city really isn't worth saving. Now while there are parallels, especially the break into a jail so you can get closer to the hero, I mean, that's pretty close, like it's right down to the wire, still, Silva wants Bond to understand him. He feels like he's the closest to him and his goal is more of revenge and wanting someone to understand where he's coming from. The setup might be kinda similar, but I think the character motivations are very different. Joker's a maniac, while Silva is more of a child. He really is, at his core, a painfully bitter child, killed with the fact that he is unknown and he was abandoned while trying to serve his country. Having this movie as well be so big in the second act really makes it even more impactful with the ending of Skyfall when it, it all comes down to a very small house with those three characters coming down to the wire with Silva's hate finally coming to its full fruition. This third act in the Skyfall Mansion is truly fantastic and it is the best part of the movie being so small and so action oriented and so great. The action in this movie throughout the entire movie is straight up fantastic and so good and the action towards the end here is so great being a PG-13 version of Home Alone. The love of the story is so massive but towards the end of the movie it ends in a cemetery with Bond, Silva, and M. And the fact that Silva wins, he completes his goal, that is such a great way for this to end. It's just so good. This third act is the best part of the movie, and I think that's why it's so great. Because in Casino Royale, one of the shortcomings of that third act doesn't really hold up. Here it's the best part, and it would not work as well if it wasn't for the cinematography as well. This movie is beautiful, and you really get to see that in that third act. This is shot by cinematographer Roger Deakins, possibly the greatest director of photography of all time. And he makes not only the best looking Bond film, but one of the greatest looking films I've ever seen. He is the same guy who did 1917, one of another great movies, Fargo, No Country for Old Men. I'm telling you, this man can do no wrong. This third act looks incredible, James Bond running across the ice is so good, and also that scene in the cemetery is shot beautifully. This entire movie looks amazing, there are so many frames that I could take and put it on my wall. This movie just overall works so well, the action, the storyline, how it looks, the music, the entire thing comes together to be one of the greatest Bond movies ever. This huge story, the intimate characters, the fantastic pacing, it really leads to a high point that will be hard for any Bond movie to ever reach. I give Skyfall a 9 out of 10. I think that the next one will be even better. Just like the movie Spectre, choosing Sam Smith's writing on the wall over the incredible Spectre song by Radiohead feels very close to what happened with this movie. As instead for going something more bold, it felt like they chose the safest option that they could possibly go. Now this movie is different because for the first time in the Daniel Craig era, we have a director coming back to do more than one movie. Sam Mendes, who I think killed it in Skyfall, has a movie here that feels so safe and like a downgrade in every area. They rely on older ideas that are fan favorites, like by using the organization Spectre or Blofeld, which is good for a quick nostalgia hit, but does it lead to a good story? Problem is, all these old tools that they have in this toolbox aren't used to make an interesting story. Spectre on a narrative level is kind of boring and not interesting. You, instead of having a new villain with a plan that connects the hero, you now have a fan favorite villain who could have been awesome, but his only thing was that he was just behind everything, which is interesting, ooh, if you do something with it, but Spectre, the organization, has nothing to do, and, and they do actually more in the sequel No Time to Die than in their own movie named after them. Huh? I kid you not when I tell you Spectre does not have a plan, the organization. The villain also has no plan. This movie is just trying to do constant reveals. And one of the dumbest reveals that this movie does as well is that Blofeld is his brother, James Bond's brother. This was a parody in Austin Powers. Who thought this was a good idea? The movie just doesn't feel as good in most aspects. The action is now kind of boring. I mean, this first one take in the movie is the best part of this movie. I mean, it is amazing. But the rest of the action here just kind of puts me to sleep. Now, as I said, that one take is good, but I don't want to be mean here. 
but the cinematography as well is incredibly disappointing compared to Skyfall, and it even pales in comparison to No Time to Die. It's not bad, it just isn't as good, and I think that's kind of the thing with most of this movie. The Bond girl here is kind of bad, I mean, she really only has a thin connection to the villain. She retroactively is made into a better character thanks to No Time to Die, but we're not talking about that movie, and we're talking about this movie, Spectre, and in the movie Spectre, the Bond girl is not very good. What's her name? Leia Sado? I forgot her. Is that her name? I don't know. She's not good in this movie. The thing is, she is good, though, in the sequel, which shows it's not the actress's fault. It's the script she's given. And the script here is just weaker compared to Skyfall, No Time to Die, and Casino Royale. And it's a kind of harmless movie, but everyone here is just pretty mediocre. Like, Ralph Fiennes is always going to be good in a movie. He's fine as M. Paddington is fine as Q. But there's nothing here where you're like, yes, that was amazing. This movie is just forgettable. Nothing abysmal in here other than the dumb reveal of Blofeld. It's just a forgettable movie. There's nothing really to love. I don't think there's everything I really hate. The best thing I can say about this movie is that it is the only movie where it feels like full James Bond at his height. James Bond in the Daniel Craig series, this is fully him. He's not new, he's not revengeful, he's not injured, he's just James Bond. He's good now, he's a good James Bond, he's just great at his job, which is neat. That's a new different take that we hadn't gotten in the James Bond film yet. Still, the movie isn't great. It gives a, the narrative, I guess, a bit of uniqueness compared to the other movies. But, you know, it doesn't make the movie great. If you can't tell, I don't hate Spectre. I just don't love it. I feel like it's the amazing Spider-Man of James Bond. Not awful, but just very forgettable. Uh, Spectre's a 4 out of 10. Let's move on to the last one. No Time to Die, the very first Bond movie I ever saw in theaters, and I still think it's a pretty good movie. I did a review on this, it was my last, second to last video, if you want to go check it out, but I won't linger on it too long. This movie is excellent at closing out this iteration of Bond. It treats him with respect, giving him the most to do with all of the gadgets, with all full Bond, with all the jokes, and it truly feels like a great epilogue and send-off to this character. Daniel Craig is still fantastic at Bond, and this is the most goofy of the five ones, but that isn't awful as it seems that he has truly turned on the classic Bond, making his evolution from Casino Royale fully feel realized here at the end. I really like this movie. I don't think it's perfect. I think it's a little too long. I mean, this movie is over 2 hours and 40 minutes. I think it easily could have been 2 hours and 35 minutes. I think a lot of it could have been, a little bit could have been taken off. The villain here is weaker compared to other villains in the series. I think even Blofeld is more sinister here than he was in his own movie and a little better than the other villain played by Rami Malek. So though, this is a really great send off to Bond. Uh, his girlfriend here, Madeline Swine, is much better. And this movie has great action, great cinematography, really great director with coming in with Kerry Joji Fukunaga, who was the director of True Detective Season 1. Still though, this was just a really good send off to him. It's a really good movie. I don't think I liked it as much as when I reviewed it. So I'm going to give No Time to Die a 7 out of 10, but it is still leagues better than the movies below it like Spectre and Quantum of Solace. That said though, I don't think it's as high as movies like Skyfall or Casino Royale. I think it's a really good movie and is right in the middle and a really great send off to this iteration of James Bond. Alright, I reviewed all of the James Bond movies in the Daniel Craig era. Now it's time to rank them as fast as I can. Coming in at dead last at number 5 is going to be Quantum of Solace. This is what happens when you start production of the crappy unfinished script. This movie is so jumbled, the characters now boring, and everything feels like a downgrade compared to Casino Royale. The action is completely nosedived. I don't like this movie. I truly never want to see it again. This is probably the only one in the series that I think is completely disposable. I do not like this movie. Number four is Spectre. This movie is competent enough, but I don't think it has anything to really make it special. It's well directed, but it's kind of dull. It's not awful like Quantum of Solace. You have Bond in a really interesting state, as this is a Bond that's fully an agent, and a story that springboards off a great opening sequence about which M was trying to figure out before she died, but the movie just doesn't do anything with it. It should be set up for greatness, but it kind of sinks with its wasted potential and its lazy script. This movie is whatever, but it could have been great, which really leaves a bad taste in your mouth after you realize that after you watch it. Number three is No Time to Die, which is really good. You get a great looking movie with a really good narrative, even if it isn't paced perfectly, with Bond at his best with great action as well. The villain might not be as strong as others before, 
for him, but man, you can tell everyone who was involved with this went all in on making an exclamation point on the entire series of it connecting all four movies back into this one last hurrah for Daniel Craig's Bond. This movie takes everything that has come before in the series, good and bad, and turns it into a really good movie, and I think would leave most fans of Bond very happy with how it turns out. Number two is Casino Royale. What could have been another in the line of crappy, dark reboots? Instead, it wears its influences on its sleeves and proceeds to make an absolutely great origin of how Daniel Craig's James Bond came to be. It has the best villain in the series of Mad Mickelson as Le Chief and some of the greatest action in the series. This first opening chase is so good that I constantly rewatch it. This movie though helps all future films by showing how people can get hurt in this universe. That really pays off in the end of No Time to Die. Unlike other Bonds, death isn't a chance in this series where Bond could possibly die in those old ones but was more like a Terminator. Here he is shown to almost die because he was overconfident and got his drink spiked. I love what this movie sets up and the first two thirds of this movie are almost close to flawless but that third act is the one thing that holds this movie back from the number one spot for me because as great as this movie is there is one movie that beats it out number one is skyfall you guys already knew it yeah but yeah i love this movie for me this is a perfect spy movie as it's pretty large world with really personal motives things keep changing and it constantly leads to james having to be on his feet and leads to an ending that feels more real as it feels like they are trying to prevent losses than actually trying to win having the villain enter with the upper hand in the third act and being able to complete his goal is something that very few movies dare to do this movie takes great action and absolutely jaw-dropping locales due to great cinematography and mixes it all with a movie that has rich characters and a fantastic narrative that is greatly paced. I love Skyfall, and, and if you haven't seen it in a while, you should give it a watch. All right, I'm done. I did it. I'm sorry this video has taken so long to make. I started working on it when my No Time of Die review went up. Yeah, that's when I started writing the script. So these videos are just now way longer projects because I put so much time into them writing. Like, this video took weeks to make. Uh, that said, I got interesting videos down the pipeline. All of the movies that I saw in 2021 were ranked, kind of. That's going to be a crazy video. It's going to be really long, and it's going to be me kind of live action, you know, one of those bad boys. We also got my favorite movie of the year reviewed. I'm going to do one of those, and my least favorite movie from 2021 reviewed. And also Hawkeye. I'm going to review Hawkeye because I read that comic book and reviewed it back in the day. So I'm going to review that. It'd be a fun little thing to come around, but that one's far out. That might be more of a February upload. So look out for that as well. Anyway, I have a lot of videos coming down the pipeline, and I hope you guys stay tuned. When those come out, I'll see you then. Bye.